Evening, everybody. Welcome to another Ryan and Dave show. Uh, we'll be joined in a little while by Megan and Megan for some extra help on this one as well. M&M's. The M&M cam will be on, on soon. And uh, obviously the subject matter of the day is our brand new Volume 2 catalog. Catalog! Just dropped on Friday morning. So we've, we've had a couple of days to look things over and we thought we would add our two cents to this and walk you through the catalog. I don't think we even have two cents worth. Well, we try. Yeah, it's true. We won't by the time we're done buying stuff out of this catalog. I know that. That's true. Epic. All right. Let's, Thank uh, you, Proteus. <laughs> you know me. I'm going to talk a lot, a lot, a lot. So I'm going to try and cut him off as much as possible. Yeah, we're going we're to get things going here. Uh, table of contents and all that, I think we can, we can skip. There's here. an app on that page. You want to talk a little bit about LVC and VSR, Dave? Yeah, download it and try it today. Well, there you go. Would you like to go into a little bit more detail on LVC and VSR date? Sure. Line of voice control uh, will work with every Bluetooth engine we've ever made going back to 2017. So you can use the Line Chief app on Android or iOS. Hit the little icon there for voice control and actually uh, use your voice to control the train. Newer trains um, in the manuals will actually have a table near the back of the manual with uh, a listing of the commands that you can use to control your train. And there is also uh, that menu available in the app itself if you just say help, and it'll pop up that menu. So that's one cool thing that's new to the app. The other is, what's the other one, Ryan? VSR. VSR. And that's not just something to play old tapes on. Um, oh, that's VCR. Oh. Same thing. Okay. Voice streaming and recording on our new Ready to Run Lion Chief set starting 2021 Big Book and now 2021 C2 catalog, new 5.0 Bluetooth sets will come with voice streaming and recording capabilities where you can either live stream your voice or record your voice and play it back at a later time using the Lion Chief app. Cool stuff. Yeah, and you've covered a lot of these on previous uh, episodes, including some demos with Dave sessions. So if yeah. you're on our social media channels, just uh, scroll through the video libraries there and you can get lots more information and hands on demonstrations of. of of all those fun things. So they are some neat things that you can now do with your trains that uh, you couldn't do once before. Cool. All right, let's go on and into the trains themselves here. We're starting with the O scale categories. Choo choo. And uh, as always, our volume two, uh, our volume two catalog is primarily a, a higher end scale catalog with a lot of new items uh, added in, in in that world. Why don't we call this the volume two catalog? It's a good suggestion. You should take that up with marketing. I will. Hey, marketing. She's probably not going to answer me till after the show. Yeah. Okay. So first up in the catalog, we've got an all new steam locomotive. This oh, one has uh, right. gotten a little bit of, uh, of buzz already out there. What uh, about Woody? Oh my gosh, Dave, you are in good form today. I will stop. <laughs> we've got uh, this is a 210 Ryan. A 210. A decapod. Mm -hmm. Tell them a little bit more, Dave. Yeah, this one, people might know it from Strasburg, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. where you can go and actually ride on it. Or behind it. Or well, in front of it. you know, around it. Mm -hmm. But this is the only steam engine in the country still in revenue freight service. Isn't that right, Ryan? Uh, probably on a regular basis, although I'm sure it shares that with the other engines in well, Strasburg. Well, the stable. only railroad yeah. that has... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they do it pretty regularly with steam. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so this is, as we said, an all new locomotive. Uh, this will be a brass hybrid. So this will be a um, combination of die cast and brass parts. We're tooling an all new die cast uh, frame for this locomotive, as well as the cab and some other key parts uh, so that you have the precision and performance that comes from a die cast machine uh, tooled locomotive along with all the great legacy features that you've come to expect from uh, our current line of legacy engines. Yep. And then shrouded in a, a handcrafted brass boiler with lots of hand done details. And uh, just, you know, the nine, all, all, all decked out to the nine. So you get the best of a fine scale brass model with the performance and reliability of a Lionel legacy steam locomotive. And uh, you wanna talk a little bit about some of the features that you managed to cram into this thing? 
Yeah, it's actually pretty uncomfortable how much stuff is inside the boiler of this engine. Yeah. Because <laughs> even though it's a Decapod at 2Gen O, it's a pretty small engine, isn't it, Ryan? It really is. This is uh, not as small as the 440s we did, but uh, smaller than the light Mikado, for sure. Right, right. I mean, it's even close to their consolidation, mm -hmm. I would compare it to. But um, this has a dual smoke unit, so you will have both whistle steam and stack smoke. And this comes with the new LCP3 legacy board. So you get the full legacy rail sounds um, in the tender as well. And you have bicolor marker lights on the front and the tender where applicable and a bunch of lights and just metal and just a bunch of cool stuff, man. Yep. For those who've asked, we'll be having a couple of questions come up on the forums. We did try to get a swinging bell in there. Uh, I, I pushed. Yeah, that was not going to fit. It didn't. just wasn't going to fit with, with everything else. Um, so we, we want the, the whistle steam route. Uh, yeah. And I think it's still going to be a, an amazingly beautiful model till we're all said and done. We are working with the railroad. They've been a huge help for us over the last several years as we put the designs together for this model. For sure. I mean, we've used a lot of real of the blueprints from the engine mm -hmm. itself. The original drawings as well as photographs. And it's because the locomotive over 90 years of service now or so has, has gone through a, a few changes. Uh, 90 over, years of service? A little over 90. I think, if I remember correctly, this was built in 27. So it's 90 is to 90. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been very helpful with that. They're going to help us out on sound files as well, yes. including whistle and, and so forth, and as well, well as some, some custom dialogue. So this will be as Strasbourg as we can make it. Yeah, and this, uh, for those who don't know, the 90 actually wore a hooter whistle for a very short amount of time. So that'll be one of the five optional whistles. Excellent. And then, you know, with your bell, you're going to have the five different pitch levels. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a very, very nice model. There are these be, going to be individually numbered, Ryan? Uh, brass hybrids are individually numbered, so we will do that on these locomotives as well. Uh, they are, of course, built to order. Yeah. Uh, so get your orders in with your dealers. Road-specific crew talk. Road-specific crew talk. Road number. Road, yep. yep. Well, so, for all the ones that say 90. 90. Yep. <laughs> and we will for the other ones as well. No, we'll do it for all of these. Yep. 210Os. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are some other variations. Of course, the 90 wasn't just the Strasbourg locomotive. Uh, there right. were several of these built, and several others survive today. So we will definitely be, be doing a few more uh, a few more road names. And we'll be doing another run of these down the road with the extended smoke box and some of the earlier Strasbourg schemes and, and everything, and other prototype railroads as well. Uh, so you'll be seeing these uh, again in the future. Uh, but this is a, a good first run at it. Uh, um, if you want, if you have more questions specific to this, in two weeks, I believe it'll be <clears> August second, uh, we'll be back on doing a live uh, broadcast with some folks from the Strasbourg Railroad. So you'll get a chance to come back and, and talk specifically about this locomotive again before the order window is is up. So definitely uh, stay tuned I, for that. I just had a really cool idea. Uh huh. Uh, you know how we have the Aux three key available on the cab two remote? Yeah. Put the ghost whistle on that. Well, it's a good thing your audio guy sitting right here and just got a ghostly look on his face. Uh, because more now work I for you, but more engines for them. Because now I think that's going to have to happen. That's a pretty cool idea. Yeah. Bam. See, that's why you tune into the Ryan and Dave show and do these live things. Real time we, ideas. We get things done. When he comes with up ideas, we just ignore it. But you know. as as you should. Yeah. Okay, well, you can't have 90 without something for it to pull. Passenger so cars. We've got some passenger cars here. Oh, yeah. Um, some of these look like new to us tooling, right? Very new to us tooling, but mm -hmm. uh, tooling that's been around before. Um, mm -hmm. we've, as, as some I'm sure know from our announcement last week, we have acquired some tooling from MTH. Uh, this is some of that tooling. Uh, we've made some upgrades to the cars uh, here and there to improve uh, their lighting performance and so forth. Uh, these are really are beautiful cars, and were high on our list of things we wanted to acquire when the chance came up. I mean, they they are really highly decorated models. You know, mm -hmm. they're not specifically large, you know, models as they wouldn't be, right? Right. But the uh, the amount of detail in these cars is very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, they do come with LED interior lighting and with figures inside as well. Nice. Uh, these will be offered in two different two packs and a of coaches and a two pack of combine and coach. So you can do up to six cars uh, in the wooden coach style. Yep. We're doing the late 1990s uh, paint scheme and then the current paint scheme for this round. We'll do some of the earlier greens and yellows and bright reds with the eggs and all that good stuff uh, 
in another run. Who knows, maybe uh, eventually when we have the chance, some open air cars and things too like that. Those would be pretty might fun. Might be, be an option. Uh, and then we've also got the heavyweight observation here in both of its iteration, the, the Paradise in that wonderful 1970s brown and yellow, <laughs> uh, and uh, the more modest uh, restoration to its Philadelphia in red and colors that started in the early uh, early 2000s, I think, is when they repainted that, late 90s, early 2000s. I do like right. the mix of cars they have at the museum, mm -hmm. or at the River. railroad. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are our mm -hmm. standard 18-inch heavyweight cars that we've had in the catalog for many years. Yep. Uh, also, also full lights and figures. Figures, yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And these all have the flicker-free LED lighting in them as well. Correct. Good. All right, next up we've got some smaller steam. Yeah, we wanted to consolidate our options. Yeah, this is, has all the big features, of, features of a bigger locomotive consolidated into a small engine. You just stole my edge. I totally did. I, How dare you? That's what I do. This is the 280, which is one less driver set wheel than the last engine. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is the extent of Dave's math ability. I did good. -er. So we've but this, got the, I mean, this really is a workhorse in the line of hell line. We've done this, yes. this engine many times. Um, not too recently. It was, what, 2016, 17 we did 2016, the last? 2017 we did yeah. this the last time. Uh, some all new road names on this one. We tried to pick a nice mix of roads here from east to west, some very big and well-known roads, as well as a few of the smaller ones uh, scattered in there. Uh, try and mix things up a little bit. But uh, pretty much every railroad at one point or another in their history had a consolidation. And while they all had their own unique uh, look to them, uh, we've done what we can here with some simple, smaller details to make things a little bit more customized. And uh, really, really nice engines. Good, simple power for those with smaller layouts or big layouts. And you just want a nice, lower cost legacy steam engine. There's a pigeon outside. He's mocking me. He's not on the stool, is he? <laughs> I think he's robotic. Okay. Oh, cab forwards. Now I can concentrate. Dave, I'm letting this one be all you. You are the, the Southern Pacific aficionado here. So yeah. take it away. I like all the, uh, the what if paint schemes you come up with. Um, I think this is the first time we've had three in a, <clears throat> uh, an engine that wasn't a vision engine, right? Uh, yeah. Three what ifs? Maybe, I mean, but yeah. wait, there's more. Oh, that's <laughs> true. Um, but there are three different options here, the AC-12 that are in the standard black that you would have found them on the railroad. Mm -hmm. um, the one in the bottom left, I think is 4278, mm -hmm. um, which does not have the lettering on the tender. And for those who don't know, that would have been pretty commonplace in the steam era um, when Pensy was running steam engines up through Donner Pass and they had to go through all the, under all those snow tunnels, snow sheds and they just got covered in soot constantly. So they just said, forget it, we're not painting them no more. Um, so we wanted to recreate one of those here with the black and side rods and just make it look used and then like they were. Um, but then you have some great paint schemes that were also wore by other SP engines like the Daylight Cab Forward, which was a big seller for us the last time we did these in 15 or 16, 14. 14. Um, but you also have the Lark there, which uh, throws back to the Vision Line GS as we did last year. And we've got lots of matching passenger cars available for those lots, paint schemes if yes. you wanted to do that. And then we also have the Sacramento Gray Boiler. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the early cab forwards actually wore the Gray Boiler red roof paint scheme from the builders, and there were builder photos in this paint scheme. And SP, knowing how dirty they got everything, quickly painted them, but still a very nice looking and sharp paint scheme on an AC-12 cab forward. So it makes a great what if engine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the Daylight Cab Forward was kind of the fantasy engine that started off the streak of fantasy engines here. Yeah. It, it did surprisingly well. Uh, the first round that we did in, in 2014 had the Southern Pacific Lines tender lettering, if I remember correctly. And so we changed that up with the, the later post-42 uh, large Southern Pacific lettering on this, this version. So, right. uh, so if you missed the first round, you've got another shot at it here. Mm. And if you got the first round, well, now you have a chance to get another one and double head them. Yeah. That would be double daylight. Mm -hmm. That All makes right. sense in my head. <laughs> now some really big, rigid frame engines. Mm -hmm. These are just about as big as you get before going articulated. Yeah, these engines definitely fall into that 
what were they thinking uh, category. But <laughs> more they, wheels, more power. But they they were actually worked surprisingly well for the Union Pacific. Mm. Uh, and so they, they kept these on the roster for a long time. Uh, and we've done a variety of prototypical and not so prototypical paint schemes here as well. Uh, there are some minor differences between the four black ones you see there at the top of the page uh, in road number and uh, tender deco and, and so forth. Uh, we tried to hit some of the different <clears throat> minor changes that the UP did on them. Mm -hmm. At the bottom, we've got, of course, a Greyhound version, uh, this time with the uh, dark gray and, and silver striping instead of the yellow accents. There's something a little bit different. We haven't really hit that variation of the Greyhound before. Uh, these have some pretty cool sound effects. These had a, a third cylinder inboard of, of the frame. Yeah, it and gives you six chucks per revolution. So we have six chucks per revolution on here. Of course, you've got stack smoke and whistle steam as well. Great engines. And you also picked a lot of different uh, road names for this one. Yeah, we did a number of uh, fantasy schemes as well. When you have a locomotive yeah. that was only ever run by one railroad, uh, sometimes it's nice to give people from other other fans of other roads a shot so we I, did i mean the c and o just looks like it belongs ryan yeah it really does i mean it geographically is probably the furthest away from from this but with the, the flying air pumps and the uh vandy tender really has a c and o look to it and uh i mean i could i could see that have been the alternate to the allegheny if you know curvature wasn't an issue yeah yeah <clears throat> not that these have any problems with curvature oh 72. Okay, these are definitely an 072 engine. Yes. Uh, we've also got Milwaukee Road, Rio Grande, Southern Pacific, and Spokane, Portland, and Seattle. I like that. A steam-powered rail straightener. Yeah, that would that would definitely be it. <laughs> That's a great comment. Yeah. Surprisingly, the, the prototypes never had any blind drivers on them, which was interesting. They, they found they didn't need it. Must have helped up through Sherman Hill quite a bit, oh, yeah. I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Ooh, All right. time let's for get some into, mac and cheese. Yeah, let's get into some diesels here. We've got uh, several variations of the SD70 Mac. Uh, this was a great locomotive from the mid-1990s up through the present day, and we've done a variety of some pretty cool paint scheme variations on here that hadn't been done before. Ooh, a lot of color in here. Mm -hmm. uh, several different BNSF varieties, including the current swoosh scheme, the original patches, and uh, my favorite, the 9647 the one-of-a-kind uh, transition era experimental. It's had a few fun nicknames over the years. Yeah, but I think it's a very classy looking scheme, Yeah, personally. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also got the two Norfolk Southern uh, yellow Macs there uh, from the, the rebuild jobs. We've got uh, patched CSX uh, Conrail units. Yellow CSX. Now I really do want mac and cheese. <laughs> the uh, CSX boxcar, the and Paducah in Louisville. Uh, for the roads that have paint schemes that have more than three available road numbers, we did something pretty cool here. We've got two powered units and then a super base unit. So the, the super base unit is non-powered, but it has all the other features of the powered locomotives. You still have smoke, you have lights, sounds, all the lights and enhanced sound with the electric super couplers. Base, electro couplers, everything but motors. Yeah, and, then, and really that's to make room for the super base speaker enclosure um, and when you add this to the other two powered units and you get the three sound units working in unison, it really makes for a rumbling train, mm -hmm. which is yeah. pretty impressive. And so for these two, um, you know, we've done the super bass a lot on F units and E units mm -hmm. where you're going to have a, a matched consist. But uh, for guys who are modeling a more modern era, this and the SD45s mm -hmm. we'll look at next give you the opportunity to throw a super bass equipped engine in a more varied consist as well. If you had a couple of... Uh, dash nines or ES 44s and you wanted to add a little bit of extra base to that, that consist, this would be a great way to do it. Now, I will say that um, the operation of these when in Bluetooth mode is going to be a little different than um, the mm -hmm. ABA sets that we do. So in the ABA sets, the B units and the trailing A unit will actually operate as a Bluetooth slave when in a consist. So the uh, head unit is needed to be able to run the whole train together. These are actually going to be programmed as Bluetooth uh, separate engines. So you're really only going to be able to control one of these engines at a time using Bluetooth. So to take, say, all three units and build it into a train, um, you're going to need to use probably the legacy remote to do so. Makes sense. <clears throat> all right. As I hinted at, we've got SD45s next up here in the catalog. These are uh, great locomotives. We've got lots of different detailing options tooled into these different uh, handbrake locations, truck side frames, noses, 
roof details. These have the kinematic pilots. Kinematic pilots, so they look great on uh, on, on tighter curves. Yep. Uh, the pilot stays straight while the, the train goes around the, the, the corner. They do have a slightly higher minimum radius because of that. Uh, we recommend 054, but we have tested this with a variety of freight cars. Yep. Uh, 048. 048. It, it can manage 048 if you are mm -hmm. pulling heavier freight cars. If you have something really light, you run the risk of pulling it off the track. So mm -hmm. that's why we rate these at 054. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, same options here. We've got two powered road numbers and then a third road number in the super base yep. uh, paint scheme. So some a variety of popular and, uh, and colorful uh, locomotives and Guilford. Yeah. And both the um, SD70 Mac and the SD45 will have a mechanical bell and not the e-bell. Correct. And as well as five different horn options, like on uh, all of our new Legacy engines. Mm -hmm. Whoa, that's a big diesel. All right. So we've got sort of the diesel equivalent to the 412 too. Yes. Although I think this might even be larger. It, it may be. Uh, <laughs> these things are ridiculously long. Yes. Um, on these, your, your minimum curve... Uh, issue is really because of your side to side clearance as these things go into a corner. Yeah. Uh, they have a tendency to wipe out anything standing near track side. <laughs> I mean, these engines were basically two Jeeps thrown together, right? Right. Yeah. They basically had two GP forties uh, on one big frame and they just ran them at hundred miles an hour head first into each other and boom, made one engine. That's kind of how, it's that's how, how I think things. of it. That's how we do things here. At the it office. is. It turns out well every time. Yep. Uh, these have all your standard features on them. Uh, Two smoke units in these, one for each half of the locomotive. Correct. And uh, uh, four different uh, UP paint schemes. Three of them are accurate variations of the prototype UP paint. Yep. And then we've got the more modernized what if uh, in the flag version. Uh, and then we also have uh, another two sort of fanciful ones, one for the Santa Fe and one for the Alaska. I really like the Alaska. I, I don't know. I've always liked their... Uh their paint scheme. But the other part I like is the newly tooled, um, the sand yes. bin that you're putting on. You put these. the new sand bins on the back. Those were added pretty early after delivery. Yep. Uh, they found it, found that these things had a lot of power and not a lot of grip. So extra sand was needed on the, on the back. And uh, so it was a detail you saw a lot and we wanted to add that for this round. So something new. Yeah. It's a lot like what I want to tell Ryan all the time, get a grip. <laughs> and I just want more power. <laughs> Okay. Oh, going from really big to really small. That's right, because small small engines are important too. That's true. Uh, and these are really nice ones at that. Uh, our switchers have done very well over the last several catalogs. Uh, so this time we're going back to the SW1200. Also the SW7, SW9, very similar, uh, basically identical car bodies, just different uh, model designations from the, the prime mover changes yeah, and so different forth. Different in internals. Mm -hmm. Uh, but from a, a model standpoint, very much the same. We do have some detail variations here as well, including uh, handrail location, uh, warning lights or lack thereof on the roof, uh, and, and some fun fun details like that. Uh, again, a nice variety of colorful paint schemes here uh, and a variety of railroads. These are single motor units. Correct, which actually powers both trucks. Mm -hmm. So these are eight-wheel drive trucks. And the nice thing about these engines is that even though they're small, they pull a lot because of that eight wheel drive um, and they do have some good weight to them mm -hmm. uh, with the die cast frame and and all the other die cast pieces on these little engines um, and i also really like the the fact that the pilots are are solid and not swinging like on the bigger engines so it, it does make a very good engine that's pretty mm -hmm. close to what you would see in mm -hmm. the real world yep what good model that is <clears throat> whoa okay. i can see these engines yeah, these are another new one for us. These are our legacy Sea Liners. Sea Liner. Uh, all the variations. The Sea Liner was kind of an interesting locomotive. There were, if I remember correctly, four different model designations that all sort of now collectively get known as Sea Liners. True. And uh, the biggest visual difference between some of these was that uh, some had a uh, six wheel truck in the back and some had a four wheel truck in the back. And we're choosing to do the cooler. We're doing the we're doing the six wheel trucks this time around because five axle engines are just weird and weird is cool and, and weird is us that's right mm -hmm. so these will be available in two a units each each separate mm -hmm. sale so yes. if you want to do a match pair you can buy a match pair if you want just one to mix in with other other power you can do that some railroads ran them singly some ran them in pairs we felt this was the most economical way to do it for for people to get what they wanted yep uh really well you may recognize this as uh, old mth tooling for the shell 
inside, this has been completely gutted and reworked. These will be uh, new legacy control, yeah. Bluetooth control. Uh, we've made uh, several other upgrades using some, actually using a lot of our own tooling to make them uh, operate the way we would like them to operate. Yeah, so the trucks, uh, the truck gearboxes, side frames and all will actually be Lionel tooling. Um, so these will have full back drivability um, and the standard legacy 40 millimeter speaker and track IR and really will be a full legacy engine um, just with a borrowed shell. That's right. Yeah. And uh, we'll do future runs of these with the the two four axles and the B units and, yep. and all of that to come. We do have the B units. So for act, those who are, I don't believe any of these actually had B units in service. Not to right? not to my knowledge, these were, these so. roads typically ran them as uh, uh, as AA sets or in single A units. So it'll be neat in the future when we do the four axle versions. Mm -hmm. We've also got some nice Long Island passenger cars there to go along with the the Long Island units. I have a feeling there may be a few uh, custom dealer Long Island. Uh, mm -hmm variations coming out down the road as well there are we know some dealers on long island yeah there's a couple of them up there who uh, uh good could, friends of ours i could think a little ken yeah <laughs> he's a good guy yeah and uh, of course long island had oodles of paint variations on these engines so yeah. uh lots of lots of ways to go there one more sea liner here we've got the the new haven uh we went back old school with the the green and uh and yellow on this paint scheme i i think one of my favorite new haven paint schemes actually but uh, matching 18-inch uh, passenger cars to go along with it, uh, similar to the cars we've debuted in, in recent catalogs here. All the same features, um, flicker-free, LED lighting, figures. Yes, we've got the two, three, uh, three two-packs and a station sounds diner there as well. Uh, we went coach heavy on this train instead of adding in observation cars and sleepers and all that because that was sort of the New Haven's bread and butter were the commuter operations. So if you're looking to put together a nice, accurate commuter train uh, for the New Haven, here's your shot. You're just scared to let me talk, aren't you? Dave, I'll leave this next one all up to you. No, I mean, you really should be. This looks like a set with, a, with an engine and some coal cars. Bam, I'm done. I'm going home. Peace. <laughs> No, this looks like a nice one. Go ahead, Ryan. Tell them all about it. Okay. Well, this is our BNSF coal train set, uh, as Dave figured out, uh, all <laughs> on his own there. Uh, similar to, uh, Locomotive has the same features as the SD70 Max we already talked about. You've got uh, six hopper cars here in the set. Uh, the last car has a working Fred on the back end of it. Uh, That's so a you, flashing light, for those who don't know. Yeah. And if you want to add additional hoppers, we've got the uh, four-pack available here to stretch that consist. The BNSF, if you want more power, of course, we saw earlier BNSF SD70 Max as well. And one of the neat things about the BNSF coal trains is it's usually kind of a hodgepodge. You have some of the newer paint schemes, you have some of the older paint schemes on the locomotives and the rolling stock. So with what's in this catalog and what we've brought out previously, you could put one heck of a BNSF coal train together with what we've put out there in the market now. Next up, we've got our Burlington hustle, Modern hustle. hustle Muscle set. Uh, a lot of neat, neat cars in this one as well. Uh, the locomotive is based on the original prototype <clears throat> SD45. We did the Great Northern version the first year we did these. Uh, BN repainted it, and then the, the actually the, the employees of the railroad pushed them to put the Hustle Muscle back on because of its history. Yep. Uh, and so it, it finished its career in this paint scheme. And then to sort of pay tribute to the Burlington Northern's history, because uh, they've just gone through a major anniversary as well. Yep. Uh, each of the cars in the train uh, represents one of the other predecessors that went into the railroad. So you have Great Northern represented by the diesel. We've got a Northern Pacific flat car with the uh, fire truck on, on there for a load. Wee you, wee you. We've got the uh, CB&Q covered hopper, uh, Frisco box car, and the SPNS wide vision caboose which has the cupola cam. Uh, you put the cam with. in there? You put the cam in there. Oh man, that was a genius idea. Yeah, so you get a lot of extra features on here from the, the nice flat car load to the cupola cam, mm -hmm. uh, a real fun fun legacy set. And for those who want to be a sort of a BN purist, I did check and all the, the photos of these cars were cars that were still around in the BN era in their original predecessor paint. So nice. even though they're all fallen flags, they carry over nicely into this early BN 
time frame. And that new to us fire truck tooling has a lot of die cast in it, so it's a really nice model of a fire truck. That really is a nice a nice model, and I think this would be a cool one because you could have you could spot this car on the on the team track at your on your layout and have yep. a, have the crowd gathered around watching the the, the town's new fire truck gets delivered and things like that. Yep, real fun little thing. All right, America. I I know how much you love the bicentennial trains, Dave. Do 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 do. And uh, you want you want to talk a little bit about this one? This one has the SW in it. Mm -hmm. Cool little switcher engine we already talked about, mm -hmm. as well as some more hopper cars. Two of them with some pretty neat paint schemes, actually. Right, Ryan? Yeah, the the CNI did uh, a whole train, a, a well, a three car train with the engine. That's a whole uh, train. The whole train, which is more than a lot of railroads did for the bicentennial. Uh, so uh, a neat little little railroad, and and those hoppers survived well into the uh, into the early '90s before they were scrapped. They were repainted, but uh, they had their two bay hoppers for a long, long time. So uh, if you're anywhere in the Pennsylvania area, you probably saw these uh, rolling on their way, typically to uh, some of the Bethlehem Steel uh, mills. Yep, they were a Bethlehem-owned company. Uh, very colorful train, one that we definitely wanted. I definitely wanted to bring into the market anyway, because I think short lines and colorful paint schemes are pretty cool. Uh, so For sure. We went this route. Now the hoppers are all die cast. Yep. So it these doesn't, are some of our heaviest freight cars. Mm -hmm. We use these in, in the engineering test layout to put yeah. the put a load test behind locomotives. We've got some of these in the, the three bay variety. That, it definitely does the job of putting an engine to the test. Mm -hmm. uh, so a, a really nice nice heavy train, even at a short length here. Mm -hmm. Another set we have here in the catalog is our Grand Canyon passenger train set. Now we've got the East Coast excursion pretty well covered with the Strasburg, so we figured why not throw one out there from the West. Uh, many of you may have been out there and seen the canyon or ridden the train there. It's uh, certainly a great way to do it. We've got one of our legacy consolidations here. Mm -hmm. uh, the set will come with four coaches, and then there are two more available for separate sale if you want to add You've got to have the whole six-car train. Mm -hmm. We're doing the train. All you have to do is model the canyon. That should be easy. You only need about square mile of land. Yeah, I did the math. It's only, in, o, in O scale, it's 48 feet deep. Wow. That's big. Yeah. I mean, that's four story building. Uh huh. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. We've awesome. got some, we've more. got some more uh, wood coaches here. Uh, again, two coaches in a, in, a, in a two pack, and there's two of those, and then the coach combine pack. Here we've got Pennsylvania and Boston and Maine. Uh, the B&M is a great one. A lot of the cars at Strasburg came from the Boston and Maine, uh, so it's a nice one. Those were in commuter service into the 1950s. So uh, we've done some recent uh, B&M. What was the last one we did? The 460, 260. We've done a couple of them in the not not too recent uh, distant past. And more to come. And more to come. Uh, so if you've got some B&M commuter trains or milk cars and things like that, you want to uh, tack on a couple of, of cars for your milk run. This is the perfect. Perfect set. And then for the Pensy guys, of course, we've got the earlier uh, earlier decoration scheme here uh, with the, the brighter window sashes uh, and all the extra extra trim and the, the lime, or not lime green, olive green trucks, which I always found interesting. I can uh, imagine if the cars at Strasburg could talk. I mean, the history they've probably seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So these we'll are go, some big box cars. Yeah, let's just go back into the world of, of big, gigantic stuff. Uh, our 86 foot high cubes, always popular. Um, these do run on an 054 minimum curve, thanks to their kinematic couplers. Yep. Uh, you can convert these over to KDs as well. We, we send a little conversion box that models the extended graft gear, so you can do that nicely if you're a a scale guy or just like the scale scale couplers. You really pick some good schemes this go around, Ryan. Lots of color. Uh, only I think that's what's so cool about these boxcars is they are so so colorful yep. and they really make a statement. Uh, I know which one your favorite is. Got to go with the Ford with the SP on the side and just that's a whole lot of bright orange rolling mm -hmm. down the rails. That's based on the uh, the prototype car built by American Car and Foundry. Uh, so it's a little bit different in, in body structure and details than our model. But uh, a historic car and an important car, and yes. one that we wanted to include, and thought that it was close enough, and the color scheme just cool enough that we had to do it. For sure. And then going forward, we even have some graffiti versions. Yeah, we, we brought into the modern day. Uh, you still see a few of these around now and then, and when you do, they've become quite the canvas for for people. So we've done Canadian Art. National, CSX, Norfolk Southern, and a home leasing car, all with a variety of graffiti on them. 
uh, our it adds artists, a lot of realism to your layout. Yeah, in my our, opinion, they they really do, and our artists have a have a good time uh, putting these together. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're uh, they're colorful. And we were a little nervous about the graffiti stuff getting started. We didn't know how well it would go over, but yeah, we did them on those large uh, modern gondolas, mm -hmm. I think, to start, and they sold out the regular versions two to one. I mean, yep, yep. people love graffiti, mm -hmm. so just keep doing it. We'll, we'll keep the modern cars coming. Mm -hmm. uh, for something who, someone looking for something a little more traditional, we've got our Hobo Sounds box cars. Uh, this is a great car that you can uh, enjoy in the train or on the siding. Yep. And uh, we've got a special sound set in these. When these are in motion, you'll get the regular freight sounds cars of clickety clacks and bangs and crashes and other random sound effects that you'll get. But at stop, you'll actually hear a hobo camp, basically. Mm -hmm. um, the sound of a couple of hobos talking and maybe even some other added sound effects that will be a surprise. Yeah, good good stuff. Similar in operation to our, our camp train car. Yes. Uh, but uh, with a different sound set other than the, the work camp, obviously. Well, they'll probably have bacon in them, though. I even wore my bacon socks today, oh. so they will definitely have bacon in them. For those who don't know, Ryan bacon. is bacon obsessed. Okay, yeah, I mean, he's American. Right? So. If, if anybody doesn't understand that, then you, you, there's something wrong. Yeah, it's true. But I think those will be those will be fun cars. I'm looking forward to seeing those come out. Yeah, those will be fun. All right, some more scale freight cars here. We've got some more variety in the two bay hoppers we talked about earlier. These come in two packs. Uh, and are really well loaded up, nice die cast cars, uh, removable coal load, you want to run them loaded or empty. Because of that weight, you can easily run these empty at the front of your train and not have anything to worry about uh, from a tracking problem, uh, no matter how heavy a train you're running. Very heavy cars. We've got some more three bay covered hoppers as well. Uh, my favorite because it, it confused the heck out of everybody. Me especially. It was the CSX car as we were putting the catalog together. People no, it's New York Central. No, it's Erie Lackawanna. <laughs> what is it, Ryan? So this is an original Erie Lackawanna car. Started out life like the EL car you see below it. Made it all the way through Conrail pretty much with its EL paint mostly intact. A little bit of a patch out on it. And then got transferred to CSX in 1999. Mm. So they patched out the either original EL or CR marks that have been put in with New York Central reporting marks. And uh, by now the Erie Lackawanna paint originally had started to bleed through the patches. So you have this whole great 30 year history of uh, Northeastern railroading all on the side of one car. I think that's kind of cool. You explained it and I'm still confused. And it's based off of a prototype photo. All right, well that works for me. <laughs> yeah, we didn't. I didn't we just make all that up. Usually you do. Usually I do. This time I didn't even it's have true. to. You should write a book. Ugh, if I only had the time. <laughs> uh, more fire trucks. More fire trucks on flat cars. Again, mm -hmm. uh, a really fun car you could add into your contest. We pick a lot of the, picked a lot of the classic uh, popular road names here, some different colors on the trucks. Uh, as I said, I think this is just a, a fun car that, that tells a story uh, yep. in, a, in a train. And it's a really nice car with the wood deck. Yes. Yeah, you get the all wood deck. This has the intermodal hitch details on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you could also swap this out if you've got trailers and things in your collection. You can easily take the truck off, put some truck trailers on there if you uh, want to do some different things with it. Really nice, versatile car. Yep. Uh, and then we've got more cupola cam cabooses here as well. Uh, these have our Wi-Fi camera on board. It's maybe the maybe the last run we do these in a little for a little while. You just love cameras, don't you? I like to stick cameras and things. And it's a good. I mean, it does well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very fun car. It gives you the the conductor's eye view of your of your train and your railroad. And that's yeah. even a Christmas version I see down there. Yeah, we had to do a Christmas version. Usually we don't put a lot of Christmas stuff in the Volume 2 catalog. Because it doesn't get here in time. Man. Right. But for this one, we wanted to include it since uh, we'll be putting them, building them all at the same time, obviously. And it just makes sense if you have a Christmas-themed layout to be running around with a mm -hmm. camera showing off all your Christmas accessories. That's right. All right, one more new scale caboose here. That's the CA1. This is uh, new tooling for us as well. We've got a variety of uh, prototypical Union Pacific uh, paint schemes on these. The Southern Pacific had some very, very similar cars, so we did one of those as well. Uh, this will cover everything from the as-delivered paint schemes uh, up to uh, the retirement of these wood cars in the early 1960s, I think, 60s. but the last of them were, were getting phased out. And we also did a Great Western one. So if you pick up the uh, original as-built Great Western uh, 210, uh, this, this design is very similar to a caboose they had on the railroad uh, and gives you some nice... This is a great pairing right there. Yep. 
Uh, and then we get into our standard O uh, modern boxcars. And this is a program designed to put uh, some less expensive mm -hmm. uh, rolling stock out there. We know as these trains are rolling by at uh, toy train speeds, some of the separate grab irons and underbody detail and uh, the fine, fine work that, that goes into our scale models gets kind of lost in the blur. So if you're just looking to fill out a train or you want something a little mm -hmm. less pricey on your layout, uh, these cars are a great option for that. They're scale proportioned. Exactly. They're, so that's the best part is mm -hmm. that you can still have the scale proportions, but not have to spring for the extra features of a car you're not going to see as it's going by at Mach 5000. Correct. Yeah, there, I summed it up well for you. <laughs> and we've got a variety of nice colorful paint schemes on these with two road numbers a piece as well. I like the Rock Island version. Mm -hmm. Bankruptcy blue. <laughs> Wait, I thought that was Conrail. No, that was Recovery Blue. Oh. Also in our uh, standard O line, we've got the rotary gondolas, uh, again in four packs and two packs. Uh, we've done these many times over in the past. Uh, one little twist on the two packs here, the two packs will give you your double rotary car, so a ro rotating coupler at each end, and then the second car has the working fret on the end. So this is sort of the alpha and omega of your train, and then you you can get the four packs to fill things in in the middle. Very nice. It's nice to have that fret on the end to really complete the terrain. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we are getting to the point now where we need to bring in uh, some help because I've talked way too much and I'm over my limit. No. Uh, and so we'll bring in a couple of ladies who actually know what they're talking about. Whoa, Megan and Megan. There they are. We get Eve. Someone that knows Thank you. Stuff. I really like that. Woo, woo. Oh, come on. They, they have like cool trains in front of them and background posters. I know. We, we got we got stuck down we here. We got a white the, table. Yeah. Hey. We, we can tell who Sadie likes best, and I have no right. idea why. Marketing. Yeah. She's not denying it. So how are you two doing today? We're doing good. How are you guys? We're here on the show. Yeah, we're, we are. We're excited. Yay. So um, what do you guys got to talk about? O-Gage, traditional line, accessories, all kinds of fun stuff. All the cool stuff. All right. Well, you just, uh, I'll let you go ahead and get started. And uh, we talked about Lion Chief and some of the um, other things earlier in the program. So I'll let you jump right on into the product yeah. and go ahead and let me know if you need me to interrupt. Okay. As I will not. Or, um, earlier about all these really great features you're starting to see, not in just in our legacy line, but also our Lion Chief Plus 2.0 line, as well as our regular traditional line, including the LVC function that you're going to see there, as well as some of the VSR and LVC function you see in our ready to run sets. And I can't wait to go over some of that stuff with you guys. But first, I want to dive into our Lion Chief Plus 2.0. Um, this is something we've had out uh, for a couple catalogs now, and we've seen really great response to it. It's kind of our advanced version of Line Chief Plus, um, but we are definitely um, bringing you a couple new engines that we're really excited to talk about. Um, first one is is going to be the Hudson. Um, this was last uh, promoted back in uh, 2018, but you're going to see some of the road names we actually haven't been seen to since like 2015, 2016. So we kind of brought some of your classic. Um, Hudson road names, NYC, Santa Fe, um, as well as your, your classic Lionel lines. Um, we also threw in a fictional scheme with the Union Pacific Greyhound, just to give you a little bit of a different paint scheme than what you've seen previously from us. But again, this is um, what's great about our Line Chief Plus 2.0 line is it's um, not just Bluetooth equipped, but it's also going to allow you to run through your legacy system, your TMCC, and its command control. So it really gives you everything you need without having to get that larger engine that's a legacy-based engine. So it can do smaller curves, um, better for tighter layouts. So just a really great option with some extra detail um, past that ready-to-run set line. It's still kind of that traditional size. Um, so again, great features in this Hudson that you're gonna see, um, that you've seen in our previous Hudsons, but just kind of upped the ante on the uh, the different things you can find on your um, your app with the LVC function. Um, so that one's representing our steam for this catalog. Um, really excited about this new one. This um, our 
diesel representation is going to be our um, our Genesis, our Amtrak Genesis. This is actually newly acquired tooling. Um, I know Ryan went over some stuff um, earlier that some of the MTH tooling we just acquired, um, but this is gonna be our first time doing this particular engine in a traditional line. Um, so we have worked really closely with um, our friends at Amtrak and getting really great um, art direction, Pantone direction, trying to give you the most accurate look to your, your Genesis. I have like just kind of what we call um, our engineering sample here. You're gonna see it is um, a traditional size, but it's got nice weight to it. But we've jumped up the features to an LC 2.0. Um, so where you haven't seen before, it's gonna actually have fan driven smoke. It's going to have electric couplers. It's gonna have the lighting package as well as the amazing uh, Bluetooth capability that you see in our LC 2.0, um, uh, Line Sheet Plus 2.0 engines. Um, so I'm really excited to see how this comes out. We're using different deco schemes, like we're using a phase three, phase, um, phase four, phase five. And then of course, to go back with the anniversary year, we have um, one of them featured in the catalog, the very first deco scheme that was brought out by Amtrak to celebrate their 50th anniversary. Um, and we actually are getting ready to do another launch this fall with some of the other deco schemes that they're going to be bringing to life. That's really exciting. Yeah, no, I'm really excited because it's kind of fresh new um, tooling that we can kind of put our spin. And again, we're working really hard with Amtrak to make sure that we give you something um, really special in these new uh, 50th anniversary deco schemes. But again, Line Chief Plus 2.0, it can be ran Bluetooth. It can also be ran on your team CC, um, command control or legacy, um, different outfits. So, so super excited. And this is not where we're gonna end with these, not just with the new launch of what we've got coming up possibly this fall, but also you're gonna see some different things to go back with these engines in future catalogs. So this is just the beginning of utilizing this really great tooling. Um, and I'm really excited to see how you guys, how you guys like it. Thanks, Megan. Before we move on to the next one, um, can you hold up the sample again? I'm gonna we're gonna try and maximize your your camera a little bit more so people can can get a look at it. This is our our early engineering sample of the locomotive. Uh, yeah, you're not anywhere near the camera. Hang on, give us one second for Sadie to pull it up. We're getting it. Uh, there's another camera in the feed. Uh, Sadie, did you want to get that one on there? Lots of cameras to choose from. Oh, yeah, there we go. Now we're, we're good on that. Now, as Megan said earlier, this is just the engineering prototype. So you're going to see just the gray engine with a, a brass horn detail on the roof there. Um, but this does have all of the LC 2.0 features with electrocouplers, uh, smoke, lighting. And it's really just going to be a cool new addition to our line, isn't it, Ryan? Absolutely. I mean, now you'll be able to run this engine on a lot of different control systems instead of just... Uh, one exactly that uh, that dying control system um so we've got uh and if you're interested in the amtrak things uh next week next tuesday we'll be on with matt donnelly from amtrak on train world tv tuesday evening so uh be sure to check that out there'll be a lot of manufacturers on there uh I, there and uh we may have some other images to show you if we get approvals uh, in time for, for the next round of these. And I know we've had questions about passenger cars. Uh, and yeah, I think there's a pretty good chance you'll see some uh, some Amfleet cars to go with these in the not too distant future also. Yep, and I also think we're probably going to come out with some uh, scale legacy versions of more Amtrak engines coming forward. Possibility. Yeah. I oh, am I giving away too much? <laughs> That's my job, Dave. <laughs> Now they're all going to think they're getting chargers or something. Yeah, plane that we can kind of mess with. But I'm really excited about the first, um, another deco scheme that just got launched, I believe in May. And it's the Midnight Blue um, number 100 um, Amtrak deco, uh, anniversary deco scheme. So I've already got art ready for that. And I'm super excited. I just got to get clear for Amtrak. And I can't wait for you guys to see it. All right. Cool. All right. Well, let's move on into the traditional world then, Megan. Yeah. Megan jump into the ready to run set world. So as we've always say, our ready to run sets come with everything you need in the box to get started. All you have to do is add some batteries to the remote, but if you don't have the batteries, you can get onto your mobile device and upload the free app that allows you to run the train. Um, this is a army inspired um, diesel train. We've done a 
couple of one a couple of years ago that was more like a Fort Knox kind of steam engine. But kind of want to take more of a modern color scheme on this and have some really fun cars that um, it's going to be really fun to add to your layout or your um, military inspired um, consist that you already have. Um, but this particular set is going to have both the LVC and BSR function. So I'm really excited to see how this comes to life. But we've got a um, RS3 um, locomotive with amazing detail um, that kind of represents the Army. You can see a close up shot in the catalog. Then you go to kind of a uh, kind of the uh, stock car that's going to have some really cool like inserts that show the ammunition. So we call it the ammunition stock car. And then we have the rocket launcher car, which those are always the fun ones here. I think oh, Dave, sure. you, I think you tend to want to like point those at people and try to shoot rockets at people. But um, but it's typically if it's Ryan car. Um, and then of course we've got the security caboose, which actually has a um, rotating um, searchlight at the end um, with LED illumination. So again, just two really great fun cars in this set. Um, but, and I just love the overall look of the color scheme. It's a very, very great, gr the green is gonna be, I think, stunning. It's gonna look really great on this set. Um, but we also brought a separate cell flat car that has two additional of those rockets that you can use on the launching car. So you can keep, you know, enjoying some fun if you lose one or if you wanna shoot multiple, <laughs> it makes it fun. Um, but this should be a really great set for anyone that's got that military um, inspired layout or just has a love for the military. I think what's really cool is that there's going to be some additional accessories that you're going to see not only on this page, but on future pages. Um, we have the uh, military surplus building, kind of like an Army Navy type store. What's really cool about this three story building is it's got a fire escape on the back. Um, we've also repositioned some of the lighting in there, so the lighting is more evenly distributed throughout the building. Um, really great addition to your layout, and again, kind of the color schemes definitely match what Megan's doing in her sets, so expect those greens and those grays, um, very realistic to what you might see in the stores today. Yeah, really excited about it. We always do really, our military stuff always does well. Always does well. I actually think that our state would work great with some of our um, World War II cars that we've had out in the past, or made in the USA. Um, Line. So again, I think there's so many things we've done both pre-war, you know, post-war kind of like that we've done from Lionel that you could actually pull, use this engine to pull those those items with. So I can just imagine Ryan down on the floor with little army men just attacking each other. And I'm over there like using the voice streaming to get him, Ryan, and you're I know, you should I, do a video I, like that. It's it's a shame we've lost our inner children. Have we though? <laughs> no, we haven't. No, we haven't. I, I could see you. Uh, I think we've actually done this before with a rocket launcher, Dave, where you wanted more speed, more more power to the rocket launcher. So, Always more power to the rocket launcher. <laughs> so again, very fun. Played by you with that, and looking forward to seeing what everyone thinks. All right, coming back. This is um, you saw this a lot previously um, in our last catalog, but a beloved hobby exclusive set that we've got the Pennsylvania Keystone is coming out with the upgraded and where it's upgraded um, just like we had in our previous catalog it will be featuring the VSR function which allows you to record your custom announcements so you're going to see that same set come out with the upgrade and that is something that um, you know we're actually in the works with it right now so it should be coming out actually pretty soon um, once we get like orders and stuff in so you won't have to wait very long to get this upgraded set um, but just excited to take a big favorite for the hobby um, hobby shop as well as just overall Pen Pennsylvania Flyer, Pennsylvania Keystone are, are like top sets that we actually produce. So I'm anxious, I'm really excited to be able to give you the upgraded version in this set. Okay, I think what's really great about this set is that it spans so many different um, people, their mm -hmm. interests. Yep. It's a good starting set if you're not quite sure what you're into Absolutely. yet. Um, we do have the passenger station um, coloring very similar to uh, what Megan is doing in her Keystone set. This was decorated to match the operating freight station that we did a couple of years yeah. ago. Um, it's got the really cool Lionel signage on it. You'll actually see this building is massive. Yeah. It is so much bigger um, than some of the previous passenger stations that we've done before. The lighting in it's mm -hmm. very dynamic, very cool to see. And again, the, the billboards and um, advertisement 
advertisements all the way around or something I think only Lionel could do. Oh, yeah. And then, you know what? As you're getting these samples in, and I know they're going to see them in a few moments, yeah. that is the one thing that I really liked is it really is the size. And some of these are like the wow factor. And that's what's really exciting about some of the yeah. accessories you've got coming out. It's just a little bit bigger, a little bit more dominant, and really shows um, great presence on the layout. Yes. All right, going to Rolling Stock, have a few different pieces to kind of go over here. Um, you're going to see on there, um, the first one I want to talk about is Angela Trotta Thomas. Um, we have a very close, we all have a very close relationship with her. I work with her a lot on my traditional line of Rolling Stock. Um, but over in our last catalog that came out earlier this year, we launched two of their kind of, we call it the iconic uh, engine series of boxcars. So this this go round, we have the GG1. Um, previously we had a Hudson and the Santa Fe Super Chief, and now we decided we're in like that next kind of iconic engine, which is that GG1 with a stunning green um, roof and ends. But this is something that um, she does amazing work. And the beautiful part of this, she does it custom for the boxcar. So I know you guys maybe watch other podcasts with her or anything you've have seen. What's great, she does it for the actual car. So I have a ton of fun working with her on this to make sure it fits what the car should do. And then this will not be the last of this. You will see some others coming out in, uh, in the future to kind of help you build that collection. And um, I, I think this is actually one of my favorites because of the coloring. Um, and to go on, another thing we kind of do a lot with, um, these are the next three I'm going to talk to you about are um, printed and assembled here in our facility in North Carolina. And that is going to be some of our anniversary series cars. So next year, there are two big ones we wanted to really pinpoint. And they're both celebrating 160th. And that is going to be the Great Locomotive Chase um, is the first one I want to kind of talk about. So on this car, it's just kind of a kind of paying tribute to the Great Locomotive Chase that happened in um, 1862. Um, and one side really kind of shows in the catalog. Um, it only shows one side on there, but it is a two sides. So one side... They have the same images, but the one will give you the roster for the, um, the Texas, um, as well as the other side will give you uh, more of the roster for like some of the different details on the general. So again, just kind of paying a tribute to that really iconic point in history with the Union Confederate um, groups, um, you know, the Union taking that, taking the general and trying to cause as much damage as possible. Um, so that's kind of like just a great car for that beloved engine we do a lot with in, in both our traditional lines as well as our, our scale lines. Uh, another one uh, is for all you UP fans, we have 160th anniversary in 2022 for Union Pacific. Um, I think overall this car is just um, overall like bright, colorful and stunning. And we all know that our um, the printing process we do here at NC really helps bring these graphics to life and really um, in a really cool way, a flawless way. Um, so I think this is gonna be a good one for all of you UP fans out there. Last um, on that particular uh, made, uh, printed and assembled in um, the US is going to be the Smithsonian. We've been partnered with the Smithsonian for quite a few years now. And we've done some really great space themed items, um, some different things with their um, pre, like prehistoric kind of things in the past. Um, but this is actually, it's their 175th anniversary this year. Um, so we worked really closely with them to kind of get their logo as well as some of the different assets we could put on the car. And I think it's just a great overall history piece for 175 years of Smithsonian. Um, and also the plan, the goal is to actually have this produced this year. So you should get it shortly after you, you know, get the orders in. So go ahead and order it because we do. Remember on Made in the USA, we order really like on top of what we're what comes in is what we order. So please kind of keep that in mind if you see any of these cars that are printed or assembled in the US, because um, we do keep it pretty tight on the order. Um, but yeah, again, just a beautiful car kind of uh, representing the Smithsonian. And then don't forget, we're kind of ramping up on our personalized season. Yes. Um, and what's really fun about personalized is it really is a unique gift that you cannot find any pretty much anywhere else because you're putting your own picture on there. But a lot of people don't realize we actually change out the art for birthday, anniversary, and Christmas every year. So you can kind of become like collecting it each and every year and kind of help growing your own classic concept for concept for a birthday train or Christmas train. So uh, definitely always be on the lookout for that because we do, um, we have found that it has been a really awesome gift to give for holidays, regardless if it's birthday, fa Father's Day, we do them for the anniversaries and stuff. So definitely keep that in mind. And you can get that through our LionelStore.com. 
Um, and again, it's a truly a one of a kind piece that you can create for a loved one, for yourself, for, I mean, for anybody. It's a really, a really cool gift. Yeah, it's a no-brainer type of gift for like a grandfather or mm -hmm. your grandkids to really say that they have something personal yeah. in them that they can pull on their concepts. Absolutely. And what I love about it is we see some of the same people, like especially for Christmas, right. I see people like every year getting the car every year because it does change. So you can really come up with that really cool um Cool, like collection yeah, of Christmas all cards. Milestones. Yeah. So yeah. don't forget, you can get that at LionelStore.com. Okay. Expand your world. So, as you've heard, we did acquire some new tooling new to us, um, but we really put the Lionel spin on everything that we're doing. So you're talking top-notch graphics, you're talking um, top-notch coloring, lighting, pug expand play. Um, so I'm really excited to get to be able to um, utilize this new tooling in a fun way mm -hmm. for all of our customers. Um, as Megan had said before, we do have some military accessories to go along with our military themed items. Um, that includes more rocket fire. So we've got the missile range here. What's cool about the missile range is that you can pair it up with the um, exploding ammo dump. Shoot those missiles at the ammo dump. It's going to come apart. It's really cool to have on your layout. Um, a lot of animation there and a lot of fun to put together and put back together. Um, also, for the first time since the late 90s, we're doing the Quonset Hut. Um, this is a low cost, affordable accessory to sit down there. You get multiple of them, have like a little scene going on with all of your army guys, um, look really cool. Um, we also have, uh, I think, which is really, really nice, is the Welcome Home Troops Townhouse. This can fit on your military themed layout, can fit on your regular layout, and it's just a really nice way to honor the troops. I know it's nice, like for, we've done, you know, sets is such a big part of our traditional line right. and we're seeing so many really great accessories as, as we kind of talked about earlier that like, again, we've always wanted to expand the role, but we didn't always have as many things that are like this grand. And I think there's just some really cool stuff in this catalog. Yeah. These accessories are so big. Um, they're going to fill out your layout very nicely. Yeah. Um, we also have coming back the train orders building. Um, very similar to the gate man, train goes by, man comes out. Um, it's got the little um, anemometer on the top of the thing that spins there. Um, again, just a little action to add to your layout. Um, I have some samples I'm gonna be showing you here very shortly of the Tough Guy Gym and Fitness. And again, this could go with your military theme or just your around town theme. Um, who hasn't seen a gym when they're out and about? Um, so that's really cool, the detailing inside of this building is so cool. Um, it has uh, a gym scene going on in there to show off. Um, so very exciting to see that. Um, we also have our flagpoles, Chevy and Ford. So whether you're a Ford fan or Chevy <laughs> fan, because I know we've got a lot of people here who are battling it out, whether it's, you know, the Ford Mustang guys or the Chevy guys, um, very fun item to have on your layout. Um, and both of these are in such a color scheme that it really brings out the Americana yeah. for both of those as yeah. well with the red, white, and blue. I know one of them's got baseball on it too, It's right? got baseball I on it. I love it, yeah. I love it. And um, lastly, on this page, we have the barn. Um, you're gonna be seeing this accessory and this page does not do this, this barn justice. It is so large, um, about 13 inches or 16 inches by 18 inches. So huge, um, really nice lighting within it, um, has the, uh, the uh, movable hay crane at the top there and the uh, the doors open on both up by the movable hay crane and at the bottom of the barn. Yeah, I feel like the barn is something that we have not had. I believe right. a long time ago we had K-Line maybe some tooling back at like right. when we acquired K-Line. But with us having some really great um, farm inspired sets, whether it's John Deere or just some of our other ones that are known throughout the Midwest, I think this these, these barns are kind of like a no-brainer. Yeah, they're definitely a no-brainer. So many different scenes you, you can do with these, um, get all of your lives back out, put them out there. Mm -hmm. um, very uh, cool accessory in a classic color. Yeah. And that classic barn red is just um, really classy. Yeah. On so I'm page. laughing. He's showing you the close-up of the, we do have a little, like, anytime we put Chevy and Ford in a catalog, we liked, we do have kind of like a bet who's going to have the highest orders. And so it actually, we'll have to do that again yeah. with this catalog. <laughs> yeah. Between these two flagpoles and things you're going to see from the previous catalog, like the water towers and the um, service stations, right now they're pretty much neck and neck. I think they are. We had, yeah. we had like a, we, we did, we had like a little like, okay, I wonder which one's going to come higher. And I do, I feel like there is a definite, like, it's pretty even. Because I know it's pretty even this car yes. this time too. Um, so. so keep it up for all those Ford and Chevy fans. We'd love to, to see the rivalry 
and uh, yeah. really love to have it expressed on your layouts as yeah. well. We love the passion. Yes. Or it's better. Uh, our friend Harry Henning has asked for some um, some Mopar uh, accessories to, to complement all these. So we'll 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 take that up uh, with the licensing gurus, Harry, and uh, oh, maybe yeah. a, maybe a good service center would probably be the right place to start with with a Dodge. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to cars, you really kind of want to dodge that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they have been asking for a charger. Oh, that's true. I'd be the, we could do them that charger. Mm -hmm. yeah. And thanks for your great camera work up there, Mike, on the up closes with the with the buildings and accessories. All right. Next page I want to go over would be um, some just additional accessories that maybe necessarily don't go with the theme, um, but we have just a simple townhouse there, three story building. Um, again, very large building with, um, we definitely changed the placement of the LED lighting within there, so you're gonna get a more consistent lighting between the three floors. Um, great with the space that we've got is the emission control tower. This was based off of a tower that I had seen in Florida. So really cool to be able to have a, a tower that's reminiscent of what you see out there. Um, also rounding out those buildings um, on the three stories, again, this does have the detailed fire escape on the back, would be the uh, flower shop here. So same really great um, interior there. It's gonna be very detailed. Our team here did such a great job. Um, when you look in the windows, you're gonna see a full shop in there with lighting. So yeah, that was um, really, cool. really cute accessory, maybe for the ladies. Yeah, and the beautiful Get thing. Your wife. <laughs> hey, I mean, a lot of the wives do the they accessory do. part. So yeah, they do this like is to, good for them. To help accessorize. Um, but the one thing I wanna mention about the, uh, the tower that we've got there, the control tower, is we did have the space launch set that was in our our first catalog earlier this year. And that set comes with a piece of uh, plug expand play lock on track. So this is a perfect accessory if you ordered that set to give you that automatic accessory to go back with it. So again, that track comes already with your set. All I have to do is plug it in. It makes it real easy. And you're up yeah. and running. Absolutely. Um, next I'm gonna show off, I'm gonna have Mike uh, do a close up of the Christmas barn. Um, this is the same barn that was on the other page, but decorated up for Christmas. Like Ryan said, it's not very often that you'll see a Christmas item in a C2 catalog, but this was one that I couldn't not do. And what's great about this is it is going to be shipping here very soon. So yeah. you should see this before Christmas this year. Um, we have um, we have the movable door here and all of the Santa's reindeer are represented. I love that. That's my favorite. It's like, I can see like you almost put them in the windows and like each deer is like by the window. Is there oh, like a little stall? For sure. So it's very, very cool. There's some red LEDs around it. Have Rudolph hanging out. Be yep. really cool. That would be cute. Yeah. So cute. Um, next, I'm actually going to do a show and tell with you on the burning house to show you how to work it. Um, this is an item that we've been wanting to do for quite some time. We have a really cool smoke unit that we want to show off. So I'm going to come over and uh, show you how to work it real quick. Megan, it looks like you so got So under the hood fire. here on the roof, we've got a smoke unit. This is... I can't even begin to explain to you how much smoke you're going to get out of this thing. And Dave can tell you what type of smoke unit we've got in there. A lot. But it's also got the flickering LED lighting inside here, uh, simulating the fire detail. There is a switch on the bottom of the accessory that will allow you to change it from low to high. So just stick your finger in there, switch it over. And then it'll take that smoke output down for you if you don't want to set off your fire alarm. But... <laughs> This is an EP sample. This will be coming out very soon and expect to see this really cool smoke unit that our engineering team has put together in a lot of other accessories, such as the um, Sergeant Stumpy's fireworks building that we had shown a couple cat catalogs ago. So much smoke out of this. It's amazing. Again, to put that roof back on there and the smoke's gonna come out of this really cool roof detail here. Looks like someone might've had an accident upstairs. Attic fire! Attic fire! <laughs> I think it was Brian cooking bacon. It probably was. That's quite the, the hit through two stories. Yes, it on is. cooking bacon. It's a lot. Have of you food. seen Ryan cook? Unless Can you imagine was... how good that fire would smell? It's true. And cooking bacon. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, this is going to be a showstopper yeah, it's, on any layout. Um, so much smoke. Every time that we turn it on here, we get people walking by going, oh, look at all that output there. Yeah. So it is going to be very robust. And again, if you're not a fan of having that much smoke wisping out, we do have the low setting as well. Very easy to get to, very easy to fill um, with that smoke um, unit being on the second story. So you just pop that roof right off and uh, you're able to fill it there. Very, very cool. Very cool. You can also run the accessory with the smoke off completely and still have the flickering LED effect as well. Yeah, very nice. And to go with that burning house unit, we do have um, quite a few fire trucks that you can purchase that you had seen on um, Ryan's flat cars. Yeah. So you could fill out that scene with all kinds of different colored fire trucks, um, maybe get, find some firemen accessories or figures. Um, really completes the scene and uh, again really dynamic features for your layout and you could use some of our scented smoke fluid in that building as well but there are lots of uh, scents that you could <laughs> use um, I would suggest maybe the log cabin yeah. or wood stove would probably be applicable in this situation yeah, that would definitely yeah that's what I'd go for Unless you want to smell like hot chocolate and just because it smells good. Yeah, someone's baking cookies. <laughs> or sugar cookies. <laughs> some sugar cookies up there. Put whatever. Guys, we should get bacon. Maybe. Maybe next year we'll do another uh, one of those contests to see which. Yeah, what, what one this year? The one that won this year was the log cat. Oh, yeah. So that. Oh. Your... You want bacon. You want bacon. Next time, Dave, you have to vote harder. <laughs> We're going to have like 10 accounts. Okay. Just start campaigning now. Yeah. So also we have the um, Amtrak through the years billboards. Um, I was really lucky to work with Amtrak just as Megan was and Ryan has been to get a lot of advertisements throughout the 50 really years cool. of Amtrak's history. So these are all official um, images from their archives. Uh, they they have helped me pick out some really uh, aesthetically pleasing ones. So. You've got, you know, go 900 miles on one take of gas, or maybe your next flight should be a train, which I think is really fun because it's part of their history. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And as you mentioned, Amtrak's really great to work with. They are so, like, they're detail-oriented, but they also really give us great direction. And, again, they want us to come out with an amazing product that represents them, and that's why I think we like working with them so much. Right. They're giving us high-resolution files. They're making sure that everything's represented yeah. correctly. They're making sure that the colors are the right colors for Amtrak. So it's really exciting to get to work with a licensor that hands on to oh, make yeah. sure that the products are correct. Yep. No, perfect. Um, rounding out the accessories, we have the uh, through truss bridge kit. This is a replacement from the um, previous uh, truss bridge. Uh, this is a kit, very easy to assemble, um, comes in a little more compact packaging and a reduction in price as well. So that always helps when uh, talking about building your layout. We also have the vintage inspired space billboards. So I was really inspired last year from Megan's space set. And some of the things that kept coming up in our research was any type of company that could find any reason to um, talk about space with their brand, oh, yeah. they did it relevant or not. Um, so you've got, you know, no matter the distance, you've got a moving company. Um, you've got the blast off for savings at Mattress Emporium. They really, came up with so many cool ads um, yeah. back during the space race that it made sense to come up with some of our own yeah. to put on a layout that maybe is inspired by space um, out of this world yeah. savings. So really fun to, to have those and um, was really excited to, for Trip uh, and our creative team to come up with these amazing, um, hilarious yeah. ads to yeah. add to the fun of space. Yeah, they do such a good job of being creative and as we work with them, sometimes, you know, back and forth, we come up with different things together and it's really fun to have that collaboration here in the building. Yep. So um, as you'll see from this catalog and catalogs to come, um, we're really committed to making you guys really great accessories. I've got so many exciting things planned for, for next year and beyond. Um, I can't even begin to tell you and maybe I'll uh, be sneaking some hints in future Ride of Dave shows on what I've been thinking about. Um, a lot of operating accessories are coming, a lot of them really cool new fun buildings are coming and some things you haven't seen before from Lionel. So um, I'm really excited to do. Yeah, no, lots of fun stuff coming up, not just now, but in the future. Yeah. So this is just the beginning of it. So we got lots of new stuff coming up. Yeah. So.
Yeah, Megan, what is the year 2022 going to be? It's the unofficial year of accessories. I'm getting <laughs> Damn. Your unofficial. <laughs> I'm the only one who's dubbing it that, but it's going <laughs> to stick. I've got a lot of good things planned. All right. Well, thank you both. We're going to continue on into the land of American Flyer. Uh, so we'll let you get back to back to work. Thanks Bye. so much. Thank you. Bye, guys. All right, David. We always save the best for last. So American let's Flyer. let's get into uh, American Flyer. This is still a big year for American Flyer. There's the 75th anniversary of American Flyer S gauge trains, and so we're carrying over the celebration from the first uh, volume of the year with some additional great things, sort of in the more traditional uh, American Flyer line. Yeah, I think you've picked a couple of great uh, trains here, train sets here that uh, carry a lot of good paint schemes with them, Ryan. Yeah. So the uh, the Texas and Pacific set, I really like this set. It's got a lot of color, also has a lot of features uh, on board. And we really wanted to create a nice deluxe, um, you know, more premier uh, traditional set. Yeah. So you've got the Flyer Chief uh, GP7. We've got the operating log dump car, a covered hopper, a rail sounds box car. Uh, a tank car and lighted caboose. And uh, of course, the Rail Sounds box car plays uh, the freight sounds. So it will give you the clickety clacks and, and all the, the sounds in motion. Mm -hmm. Really adds a nice level of uh, realism to your train. Uh, you've got the operating log dump car there. You've got the Flyer Chief diesel. So a lot of, a lot of fun going on in, in this set. Yeah, the Flyer Chief engines are a really nice touch, too, for the, the people that are into more traditional Gilbert-sized engines. Um, these do come with the Lion Chief remote and can also be run conventionally as well. Yep, or with the app. Or with the Bluetooth app. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have another set here uh, <clears throat> paying tribute to the Clinchfield. Uh, this is one of those little railroads that I don't think gets a lot of love and attention, but the more I study it, the more I find it interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Nice paint schemes, simple, not too uh, audacious, but just a, a nice, well-run railroad. So we've got uh, the Jeep again, three hoppers, uh, boxcar, and lighted caboose here in this set. Very nice looking sharp paint scheme, Ryan. Mm -hmm. More Jeeps. More Jeeps. Uh, again, uh, same features as we've done on these in the past. Uh, four new road names, Burlington Northern, Chessie, Lehigh Valley, and the Wabash. Um, Dave, you've already talked, you know, a lot, a lot of great features on these. The speed control on these over the old uh, Gilbert versions is mm -hmm. so greatly improved. It's also nice having electric coupler control from the remote or the app. Mm -hmm. And uh, also great sound, Lion Chief R, uh, RC sound system. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a great variety of freight cars here. We've got the two bay covered hopper uh, in five different paint schemes, two road numbers available for each. Uh, so you can expand your fleet. Uh, we've got some more box cars. Uh, again, a lot of different colorful paint schemes here um, on on these road names. Box cars always seem to be one of our, our best selling uh, freight cars in S gauge. Also, some really fun paint schemes on the three dome tank car. I like the uh, the Frack King oil myself. I wonder who came up with that. I don't know. Someone was pretty punny on that one. <laughs> And then uh, a lot of fun operating cars. Uh, we've got the uh, log dump car. We saw one in the set. We've got uh, three different separate sale versions here as well. The uh, inset graphics you see there are on the top of the car. Uh, so if you're not carrying a, a log load, you, you'll be able to see see that on top. It makes uh, a nice addition to it. I mean, usually flat cars don't have much area for graphics on them. So mm -hmm. to be able to put them on top like that is a nice touch to really bring more color and life to your consist. Yeah. And these will work with the... Uh, activation track, which is available separately. You can either use the new fast track version uh, or the old traditional version. They will operate off of both. Yes. And they do come with the uh, dump bin, right? They, yes, they do come with, they don't come with the track, but they do come with the dump bin. Correct. And we've also got uh, the uh, patriotic sounds box car. This is like our Christmas music box car, but it plays different patriotic sounds and it's good to leave on your layout all year long. As long as you're feeling, you know, in the America spirit, which should be all year long. All the time. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then one that I, I think is kind of fun and hopefully will migrate up to the O-Gage world down the road here is our, our two-car set for the Hobo and Bull. Uh, this plays off of the walking brakeman car. One car has the Hobo on the running boards. The other has the Bull or the, the railroad police officer uh, in hot pursuit. So this will be a, a neat little set. The, the 
figures walk back and forth along the roof of the car of the car and uh, play music. Mm -hmm. And they just have to watch out for tunnel portals. Yeah, tunnel portals could be an issue on these. Uh, another operating car, we've got the uh, ramp car. Uh, these are all in our T-Rex oil uh, collection. We've got the, the ramp car is neat. It, uh, again, on the operating track, the platform pivots to the side and drops so that the uh, oil truck can be offloaded. We've got a single dome tank car in that with the great graphics and then two uh, trackside accessories as well, the, the high and, and low mounted uh, tanks, both which, of which have the working LED lamps beside them. So you can put together a whole little facility there on your on your layout. And uh, wrapping it all up, we've got uh, three cabooses. We actually haven't put a flyer caboose in the catalog for a while, so it was time to do a couple of those. We've got uh, U.S. Army to go back with some of the four packs we did in catalog one, uh, along with the Rio Grande and uh, Santa Fe safety slogan uh, caboose here to round out the catalog. So I think we got through it, Dave. I know you had a gas. Uh, I had it. fun too. Oh, um, so let's, uh, we've had a lot of great questions and, and feedback. If you have uh, questions that we didn't get a chance to uh, cover on online, because we, we try and keep things moving uh, with so much information to cover, feel free to post things on social media. And uh, one of us will do our best to, to get back to you in a timely fashion on that. As I mentioned, we will be on uh, on social media again next Tuesday for our Amtrak event uh, on the 27th. And then the week after, we have an event with the Strasburg mm -hmm. uh, to, to go over number 90 in more detail and also just catch up with them and all the great things that they are doing now that uh, the railroad, like so many places, is back up and running again. And you have the opportunity to go out and enjoy some trains. Yep. And then at some point, I'll be doing another Demos with Dave episode. Uh, we have the two 10-10-2s and the Veranda turbine samples to, to look at. So that'll be an exciting episode whenever we get it going. Yeah, we've had a lot of things come into the office over the last couple of uh, weeks and months. It's a very busy time for us this time of year uh, in terms of current production things uh, and, and shipping. So we're, we're ramping up for the, the big part of the year. The Volume 2 catalog uh, printed copies will be arriving to everybody, we hope, uh, sometime over the next week, starting to arrive to you the, for this, this week and then coming weeks. Uh, the order window is open through the beginning of August. Uh, check with your favorite dealer. Uh, every one of them has their own sort of deadline so that they can compile things and get their orders into us. So you still have plenty of time to peruse the catalog, um, ask questions. Jot down ideas, prioritize your, your list, and then see your dealer and get those, those orders in. And we'll be back to talk to you again in the near future. Until then, happy railroading, everybody. Woo-woo! <laughs>